How Mattel got its groove back. The toy company seemed doomed for a swift death a few years back, but is now primed and reinvigorated for success. After suffering crippling losses to their core business model, new leadership helped formulate a roadmap for success to not only keep the lights on, but help the company thrive. Online shopping? That will never last. When we look back and perform the autopsies of so many famous companies that did not survive the wrath of the new millennium, quite often it is very easy to point to what it was that killed them, online shopping. Way back once upon a time when Jeff Bezos was just a nerd with a bookstore in his garage and it took 10 to 14 days to get something you ordered online shipped to you and maybe it would show up, massive storefronts were all the rage. Shopping in stores and waiting in lines for much anticipated items were once just the way things were done, long before we ever knew any other option could possibly exist. Mattel, the toy and board game producer behind such mainstay hits like Barbie. You're magical! Color change again! Barbie Rainbow Magic Mermaid Dolls! You can be any. And Hot Wheels. Team Hot Wheels! You've never seen a race like this! It's the Hot Wheels Double Dare Snare! Was just another one of those companies reliant upon storefronts to sell their goods. Through a strategic partnership with these brick and mortar establishments, Mattel and its chief competitor, Hasbro, had a nice thing cooking. All of this would soon come crashing down hard with the advent and success of online retail, as Mattel found themselves woefully unprepared for this turning of the tide. As the 2000s went on and entertainment moved to a far more digitally dominated space, Mattel sat back like many other companies and saw the shifting landscape as a fad that certainly would not last. They continued to operate as if things would swing back in their favor to the more traditional model of people buying their Barbies and Hot Wheels at the local Toys R Us. After all, whether by their hubris or because of past success, they saw themselves as having had the track record under their old model for financial success. To put it lightly, they were sorely mistaken. Mattel continued to focus on their core brands of Barbie and Hot Wheels, but were missing out big time in the shifting cultural landscape that Hasbro had embraced. With the announced bankruptcy of their longtime partner and collaborator Toys R Us in 2017, Mattel seemed doomed for the same fate if they did not adapt to the modern day ASAP. A change in strategy, right in the nick of time. One of the core inflection points many point to in the shifting tides of the past 20 years is the different ways companies approach licensing their material. I've written before about how merely licensing your content as opposed to producing and distributing it is often the death knell for a production company or studio, but the opposite is true for, say, a toy company. Hasbro was very wise to this and ahead of the curve, licensing their incredibly popular toys, perhaps you've heard of them, Transformers, to be made into feature-length films in Hollywood. Most robotic organisms from the planet Cybertron, but you can call us Autobots for short. Autobots. An interesting move at the time, and depending on your opinion of those films, maybe an unnecessary maneuver altogether. But Hasbro had the incredible foresight to make themselves an absolute crap ton of money by not even having to lift a robotic finger. Opening up this additional licensing revenue stream for them was a total no-brainer. Being able to profit off of your own product that you will then in turn end up selling a ton of more product of, how could you possibly say no? Well, Mattel did. Mattel kept quiet while all of this was going on, even despite the fact that they controlled some of the most valuable IP in the game with their core Hot Wheels and Barbie brands, while also having the rights to toys like He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and the American Girl doll series. Ranger became the mighty Battle Cat, and I became He-Man, the most powerful man. Mattel, again, considered this a blip on the radar and continued trying to do their business the old-fashioned way. Attitude reflects leadership. In 2018, Mattel was faced with a very challenging inflection point. They were tanking, 
losing in every way to their competition and seemingly over a barrel after the closure of every Toys R Us. They needed to make a change and found the leader they needed in, Enon Kreitz. To come in and take over as CEO of the famous brand, Kreitz, whose background was in the film and television space, seemed to be the absolute perfect fit for a company that needed a wake-up call to jolt them into the 20th and mall, and most recently before joining Mattel, Maker Studios, Kreitz was perfectly positioned to help turn Mattel back into a winner. Using his business acumen, previous experience, and frankly, a strong amount of common sense, Kreitz sifted gears of the company and began following the blueprint of Hasbro by licensing out Mattel brands to make film and television content based on their products. Most notably, the upcoming Margot Robbie starring Barbie film that continues to add impressive cast members seemingly every day, and the Hot Wheels feature film that will be made by Warner Brothers. These moves to embrace the success and brand recognition of their products was a huge turning point in getting the company back on track. Also worth highlighting is how the company embraced other aspects of modern day entertainment. The Hot Wheels Rocket League video game is an incredibly successful game reflective of the digital content and new version of toys kids want to play with. By continuing to license out their different brands, the company is utilizing their own kind of self-aware advertising in which their brands become synchronized with every aspect of content. Embracing the moment. Not only has the company been able to flip the script on its bottom line profitably by embracing modern times, Mattel has also put itself squarely in the dialogue of representation. Leaning into the products they have, Mattel has made themselves both culturally aware and relevant through their new portrayals of the infamous Barbie character. Barbie. Much to the dismay of a bunch of weirdos online is no longer just the white-skinned and blonde-haired doll of our past. A lot has changed since 1959. Barbie now can be anyone. Welcome to our house. I like your dog. It's cute. Hi, Mom. Yes. A simple but effective message, I believe, for so many out there. Barbie is portrayed in every possible human form now. There are black Barbies, Asian Barbies, gender-neutral Barbies. The company has really done a nice job of embracing the much-needed and meaningful change of our modern day. It may feel like a small fix, but if it can impact anyone's life, that fix is worth it. Mattel has also reached out to and collaborated with important modern icons like Naomi Osaka to create their own signature Barbies. A really important further step in the right direction for the company who really didn't make too many changes since 1959. To infinity and beyond. To infinity and beyond! All right, that was super lame and on the nose, but it is a part of the future story of the brand. Under the guidance and leadership of Kreitz, Mattel did not just survive the turbulent 2018, but finds itself primed for incredible future success in the years to come. They secured an exclusive deal with Disney to produce the very popular Baby Yoda dolls from The Mandalorian, and have an overall licensing deal with Disney to create all of the toys for any Disney movie or television show to come. With such strong business leadership at the helm, Mattel seems poised to be around and in our lives for a long time to come.